In this video, we're going to be covering two special tests that are used in the detection of postero inferior labral tears, and those are the Kim test and the jerk test. Now, one major difference between these two tests is the jerk test is a little bit better at detecting these labral tears when they're more posterior. The Kim test is a little bit better when they're more inferior, but in general, both of these tests detect postero inferior labral tears. The first test we're going to cover here is the Kim test. And to perform the Kim test, the patient's going to be positioned either in seated or standing. It's easier to do it with the patient in seated. And the test arm, in this case the right side, is going to be positioned in 90 degrees of abduction and 90 degrees of elbow flexion. So let's take a look at that. 90 degrees of abduction, 90 degrees of elbow flexion, and technically it's also 90 degrees of internal rotation. Can't see it here because of the play button, but her palm is facing down. Now from here, there's going to be a series of things that happen all simultaneously, so pay close attention. There's going to be some forces applied by the PT, and there's going to be a movement applied by the PT. The forces are as follows. Number one, there's an axial load applied to the humerus. There's also going to be an inferior and posterior directed force to the proximal arm. Okay? And then the movement that's going to be applied is 45 degrees diagonally upward. Okay? So let's break this down one step at a time. So there, my left hand right there, I'm actually gripping just distal to the shoulder. So basically on the proximal arm, so basically right around where the humeral head is. This arm right here, my left arm, is going to be applying an inferior and posterior directed force to that proximal arm. My right arm right here is where I'm going to apply the axial load to the humerus. And I'm going to do those things simultaneously. So my right arm, axial load to the humerus. My left arm, which you can't really see there, is an inferior and posterior directed force to the proximal arm. And while simultaneously applying those forces, I'm going to be moving the arm 45 degrees diagonally upward while maintaining that 90 degrees of elbow flexion. So the only joint that's going to be moving is the shoulder joint. Axial load, posterior and inferior force to the proximal arm, and then moving that arm diagonally upward. So bring it upward, bring it back. Bring it upward, bring it back. Bring it upward, bring it back. And a positive Kim test is going to be the reproduction of posterior shoulder pain. Now you may have an accompanying posterior clunk of the humeral head, but you don't necessarily have to have that. Okay? You may or may not. The positive test specifically is the reproduction of posterior shoulder pain. Now as a standalone test, the psychometrics are actually pretty good. The sensitivity is okay, it's 80%, meaning if the Kim test is negative, there's an 80% chance that the patient does not have a posterior inferior labral tear. But the specificity is much better, 94%. So if the Kim test is positive, there's a 94% chance that the patient does have a posterior inferior labral tear. Now again, remember that the Kim test is a little bit better at detecting those tears when they're a little more inferior than posterior. So let's take a look at this test one more time. So we're going to position the patient's shoulder in 90 degrees of abduction elbow at 90 degrees of flexion and 90 degrees of internal rotation with the palm facing down. With one hand, I'm going to apply that posterior inferior directed force to the proximal arm. And then with the other arm, I'm going to apply an axial load to the humerus. And while applying those forces at the same time, I'm going to be moving the patient's shoulder 45 degrees diagonally upward like this. You can certainly do it at this speed, or you can even slow it down. And a positive test is going to be reproduction of posterior shoulder pain, regardless of the accompanying posterior clunk of the humeral head. You may or may not hear that or feel that. Now, the Kim test is often combined with the jerk test when attempting to rule out a posterior inferior labral tear. So when you combine those two tests, and they're both negative, the sensitivity actually increases to 97%. Notice as a standalone test, the Kim test only has a sensitivity of 80%. So you can't be completely sure that if it's negative, they don't have this tear. But if you perform both of these tests, and they're both negative, 
the sensitivity is 97%, and you can be really, really confident that they don't have this labral tear. Now we're going to talk about the jerk test, which again is also used to detect these posterior inferior labral tears, but it's a little bit better at detecting them when they're more posterior than inferior. To perform the jerk test, the patient's going to be seated or standing. Again, I'm going to do this with the patient in seated. And the test arm is going to be positioned in 90 degrees of abduction and internal rotation and 90 degrees of elbow flexion. So let's take a look at that. So 90 degrees of abduction, 90 degrees of internal rotation, and 90 degrees of elbow flexion. Now the PT is going to stabilize the test side scapula, and again, there's a force applied by the PT and a movement applied by the PT at the same time. Okay? The force applied by the PT is going to be just the axial load on the humerus. The movement is going to be pure horizontal adduction. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So I'm going to stabilize this scapula with the left arm. With my right arm, I'm going to apply that axial load to the humerus, and while applying that axial load and stabilizing the scapula, I'm going to move her shoulder through horizontal adduction while maintaining that elbow flexion. So let's take a look at that. So move it in like that. And a positive test is going to be a sudden clunk as the humeral head slides off the back of the glenoid. So as I'm going through horizontal adduction like this, applying the axial load, you may feel and or hear a sudden clunk. That's a positive test. Now I don't show it in this video, but you can also reverse this movement and go through horizontal abduction back to the original position. And on return to the original position, a second jerk or clunk may be observed where the humeral head is returning to the glenoid or relocating. This last part is not required for a positive test, but again, it can help you as a clinician further in your mind rule up that yes, they have a posterior inferior labral tear. Again, the positive test is that sudden clunk as the humeral head slides off the back of the glenoid as you're performing this horizontal adduction. Now, as a standalone test, the sensitivity is not that great, only 73%. But remember, when the jerk test is combined with the Kim test, the pooled sensitivity increases to 97%. So if both tests are negative, there's a 97% chance that the patient does not have this labral tear. But as a standalone test, the specificity is actually very good, 98%. So if you have a positive jerk test, you can be very, very confident that the patient does have a posterior inferior labral tear. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.